Hello and welcome to the Thompson Dunn YouTube channel. This is a recording of a second webinar that we've been running in recent weeks. We put together a series of three. This is number two. This is called Transitioning to Create the New. We hope you enjoy it and we hope to welcome you on live uh, webinars in the future. But in the meantime, enjoy the recording and we'll see you again soon. I will begin by just giving you an outline of what we're going to talk about. So the introduction bits are we're going to analyze uh, transitioning and uh, looking at it from the hypothesis of a paradigm shift and then try to understand what pre preparing for the new state will look like in order to create the new future state. An overview of what we will be discussing today. So let's start by just having a little look at what we looked at last week or the week before when we were talking about leading yourself through change. And we use this model of called Life Changes by Spencer and Adams as, a, as a, a good model to understand how the changing uh, of uh, change, how an external change um, happens over time and what impact it has on our performance and on our morale. And we discussed the reality, the pit being kind of the turning point for a change process to turn that corner and move into something that is perhaps more positive from a morale and performance point of view and talked about how much time that can take on an individual and collective basis. And accepting that only when you hit the reality of that change process, can you really move forward in terms of letting go of the past energy returning and you're finding sense and meaning in, in what the new world order will look like. But that's a very external process. Change happens externally. You rearrange the furniture or you buy something different from the supermarket, but actually true change can only happen when we transition. And that is a deeply internal and psychological shift and one that really we are have, to, have to take ownership of in order to uh, really let go of what was in order to adapt to the changing circumstances. So there's a, a parallel with evolution here and we're going to be drawing on some of those things as we talk throughout the first half an hour. So transitioning is a big challenge psychologically, particularly when we're in a vacuum of uncertainty. and that making sense and finding new meaning in that vacuum is really quite important because our hypothesis is that planned change will not happen in the scenario we're facing with COVID-19. But when you don't have control or it's not possible to be in control, planned change is almost uh, impossible to achieve. And we have this quote that Pat came up with, which is actually a Yogi Berra quote, which is even the future ain't what it was. And I think we probably can all reflect on that and find some kind of sense and meaning from that. It's also a song by Meatloaf, which uh, amused me when I was doing some research for this, uh, for this workshop. And the real point that we wanted to make is that, wh why do we think that? Well, from our analysis and our understanding from a psychological perspective is that this is really most likely a paradigm shift. And that's something that uh, was defined by a guy called Thomas Kuhn. And he's saying that, a paradigm shift is when fundamental change in basic concepts and practices happen. We can't do what we used to do. It doesn't fit the new world order. And in the context of thinking about this in terms of a vacuum of, of space, vacuums are entirely devoid of matter and meaning. And as soon as a vacuum is exposed to matter, meaning, thought, behavior, that tends to flood into that vacuum and become the predominating element, the predominating behavior, the predominating view. And therefore, I think transitioning into a completely new way of creating the new, it, you, we have to be quite mindful about what we do in that process, because as the, the analogy of uh, a vacuum takes hold, with that will fill the new world order. And something we always talk about when we're, when, well, certainly something I'd always talk about when we're working with clients and going through periods of transition in order to be future oriented in either how they behave, lead, manage, is to think about the concept of outcomes. And outcomes are, are really, uh, well, they're by their nature gonna happen. There will be an outcome to any process of change or transition. And I think the most healthy way in order to transition at the moment is to think about which style of outcome, uh, your approach to outcome you want to take. You have the option to be attached to it, which can be quite um, a fulfilling thing, but often quite a dangerous thing. You can be detached from it where you don't really care. And I think that's probably quite unhelpful, certainly in our 
societal challenges that we're facing at the moment. But perhaps the most important thing is to be unattached to and let go of what outcomes are, be involved in the process of defining them, but whatever the outcome is, is something that you can then work with and deal with. And that builds on our consulting around being good to great, creating new, creating the new that will last and be successful in the future. So we thought that one of the things that would be sensible to, to focus in on, and if you've worked with us before, this is something we talk about a lot in order to understand how we create anything, particularly in the new, to understand the little, different languages of the brain. And this is based on a whole brain model by Ned Herman. And some of you will have seen this, some of you won't. So I'll take a moment just to explain what we're talking about here. When we are looking at the different languages of the brain, we can consider how to proceed in a very different way based on different modalities of how our brains work. If we're thinking about factual, logical, rational decision making and thinking and problem solving, that's a very uh, blue quadrant process on that Herman whole brain dominance model. Um, and that really responds to questions like, what's going on? Give us the fact, give us the details of what we can do in this situation. Very analytical and rational and logical way of thinking in the brain. A green quadrant approach, so down here, responds to the more sort of how questions, more procedural process, um, detailed, planned outcome type approach. How are we going to move forward? Then we have the red quadrant, which is more interpersonal and subjective, uh, which is looking at more questions around who is involved, the subjective qualities from an intuitive point of view of who and how can we work together uh, as, a, as a collective body of people to define what we should and could do. And then we have a yellow quadrant, the why type of questions, much more conceptual, abstract and intuitive thinking. And our argument is that in order to create the new or even prepare before you create the new, that's quite a whole brained approach. So we ask the what and how and who and why questions, but perhaps in different orders. And our analysis was suggesting that there seems to be a struggle we take the COVID-19 situation between the what type questions and the subjective who type questions. And if you talk to Ned Herman, who's a brilliant guy and Pat trained with him many years ago to use uh, this, this whole brain tool, um, he would say that connecting that different language of the brain, the what and the who requires us to maybe think about going through a different modality. So in order to connect people who are focused on very what analytical type questions with those that are feeling more subjective issues and in either intuitively or interpersonally, you can go through a different quadrant of the brain in order to understand how you can connect in order to create the new. Right now, I think the hypothesis would be that a planned process is almost impossible to achieve. So that would suggest that maybe the how type questions, the green type questions, or maybe not as appropriate as the why type questions aligned with our concept of this is a paradigm shift and what was no longer potentially applies to what will be and what currently is. So I, I, what I've found comfort in when, when we're thinking about creating the new, particularly if it's uncertain, is to think about it from a very natural perspective. And nature throws up periods of change from time to time um, and evolving is kind of what I think is often the case. And that parallels with my point about transition. So change will happen. And I'm gonna analyze it from a slightly thermodynamic point of view, which was actually really kindly uh, provided uh, to us from a, a colleague of ours and something that Diana seems to know uh, more about than I certainly did. Um, but nature throws up these times. It's happened on many occasions and we can look through human history and prior to that, nature will do that. Um, but there is a nature has a method of evolving itself in order to survive to the new future state, allowing us to create the new. So our argument really is evolving your process, transitioning psychologically will prepare you to be in a position to create when transition and change processes have gone through that journey of the curve and you yourself have thought about, do I need to let go of what I used to do and ask different questions in order to make that shift in the new world order. And I was just thinking about how to talk about that. And, and maybe the chrysalis is a really nice visual to think about because 
that is quite literally a, a, a being shifting from one state to another state in this in in the ecosystem and in the natural environment in which it can survive and thrive now if we have to think about changing who we were and changing into something else that is different both visually and also from a being perspective then that's okay because animals nature humans have done that for thousands of years in order to survive in a new state and okay we've got clearly the, the one of the biggest uh, um, transitional periods in in our recent history with this COVID-19 situation but I think it's something we can apply and learn within different changing uh, circumstances in work or in life um, so the chrysalis I think is one that I will certainly remember when I'm facing change from preparing for this workshop and perhaps and hopefully it is a useful metaphor for, for you individually and collectively. So transitioning and preparing for the future state. Um, and this builds on the point about getting to the reality. And thermodynamics, here it is very briefly, wherever there is order by the laws of nature, there will be a decay into a state of disorder resulting in inexorable change. They, they are the laws of thermodynamics and probably the laws of nature. As soon as you have control and, and management over the natural order of things, by the very nature of existence, things will build momentum in a decaying process, which will result in unplanned, unstoppable change. And I think in our, in our worldwide crisis at the moment, that is exactly what's happening, uh, measured by multiple different biological scientific analyses, but also from a psychological experience. A lot of the people I'm working with are trying to understand how that lack of control and inability to manage, which are very post-industrial mindset, something we've done uh, in that period to kind of get hold of what we can control and manage it in order to navigate the chain, that's kind of going. And on an individual level, that can be really quite frightening, um, particularly if you have a mindset that is normally quite rational and logical, very what and how, uh, and, and you have not potentially been able to ask the more why and who questions that control and, and management of change is no longer possible in that scenario but i'm sure all of you have had an experience where you try to get hold of something that's changing and try and get it back close to where it was before i've got a dog trying to get control of him i've got a leash but sometimes he's too fast for me and he runs off into the distance and I lack that control and we have to think about another way to get that under control to return to order. But we have here a case where order uh, it has been decayed by the attack of something like a virus, but in other examples we can point to uh, in our own experience, that would be fantastic to have a discussion at the end. How do we adapt to that? Well, we have to be change able. Changeability is something that I think is going to be either currently and in the future state probably the most important quality on a, a, if you're doing some hiring or you're doing some development because it will be potentially very very new and probably very very new how we order ourselves as societies as governments as organizations as teams uh, and change ability will be a critical skill set to have refined and adapted in this period of, of inexorable change Intuition and going with the flow is the big taking point away here because that following that intuitive, um, less rational and logical, follow where the feeling goes and going with the flow, like riding on the, on the ocean, you'll have peaks and troughs and lefts and rights and high winds and flat calms and going with that flow psychologically is the most healthy and probably the most potentially uh, proactive and successful long term solution because in the face of unstoppable change we can do one of three things we can immediately feel helpless potentially because we haven't adapted the skills to deal with the ability to not be in control certain personality types would find no control very difficult and decision profiles and thinking styles as we've looked at and that results in a, a feeling of being worn down very quickly and uh, and it's from a bottom-up perspective it's at that point you let go. The combative mindset around trying to regain that control and use what we've used in the past in order to control things, that's a fight it mentality. And because we're in a potentially in a process of inexorable change, fighting it 
is probably the most unhealthy thing you can do and will result probably in complete wear out, probably in significant psychological distress because what you used to do no longer applies no matter how hard you try. And it's at that point, finally letting go will put you in that one down position of not having the resources available to you to potentially accept the reality and let go first. Get to that pit on the change curve, get to the um, letting go of the past, going with the flow and going with intuition to help you sculpt how you can prepare and then create in the future state. Final points we wanted to make were to introduce some tips around how to create, how to prepare in order to create the new. We've done a lot of talk about transition. And I think that's the really key point to be made here is let go of stuff that no longer works or, or questions that aren't helpful. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be helpful in the future. It just means that they're not helpful in the now and therefore not allowing us to let go, reach the pit, the reality of our curve of change and to begin that psychological process of changing. Something Pat talked about the other day was old style leadership, that post-industrial management of control is not going to, to work in a, in a paradigm shift or not be as effective when this paradigm shift is realized and integrated into how we go about preparing and creating the new. Open mind, flexibility and adaptability, that change ability to relax what we thought we would needed to do in order to survive and to succeed and going with the flow of wherever the speed and the rhythm of things are going either in our external world but probably more important in your internal world noticing your process and noticing where you are at a particular stage age time and grounding yourself in that and being okay with that because you're able from a change perspective to view the evolution of your creation in the future state being something that will adapt to the needs of the environment. As we've sort of talked about those what and how questions, not really possible to answer if we take our COVID situation, but oft, often, you know, I've done work with clients in changing processes, stuff going on at the moment with one of my clients in the film finance space and the, we aren't asking any what and how questions because we haven't defined our strategic vision for what we want to, to do as a as a group uh, of uh, professionals once that is applied we can start to build in the what and the how working back from the vision of where we want to be i think exploring yourself and how you make decisions and behave and think uh, and use those skills or maybe the gaps that you have in your toolbox as a vehicle for help you to create the new world order for you and for your teams, your businesses, your families, whatever it needs to be. Exploring from a position of strength and maybe an analysis of where you have uh, uh, not weaknesses, but you're not maybe that comfortable of going in a particular direction. You can think about that in terms of the whole brain model or around your decision making. We obviously do a lot of work with decision making and decision profile. Those tools are really vehicles for help you to create in the, the, the new world order for you or for the uh, requirements of the work you're doing. And I think adaptability again here about what works and what doesn't work. We were looking at our database, the decision profile a few days ago and, and actually seeing that there is a large proportion of the population that we've assessed that has the potential to adapt decision making in order to create the new rather than react to what it is and then embed the new. And I think Adapting your profile, adapting your style allows you to have a three dimensional impact, both in the creation of and the organization of the new future world. Intuition and accessing your inner world is going to be fundamental. So relaxing on the what and how, what can we measure, what's going on? How do we feel about this? How, do, how can we feel that we might want to create something that we would be uh, more comfortable with in the future have an opportunity here to do that and using your inner world and talk, thinking about transitioning to a more comfortable space um, and it could be very practical you know i've done work with clients about moving on from a job into a potential new world where they either go into employment again or they set up their own thing that's working with their transitional brain their transitional psychological process and feeling that way, what do I want to do? What feels good to me and what doesn't feel so good? 
is a, a book that Pat uses a lot with cl coaching clients called The Artist Way that says, you know, pursuing creativity is not an external activity, but an internal transitional process. And there are various vehicles that you can use to help you to do that. So walking the dog or exercising or uh, cooking, whatever it may be. Okay, it doesn't have to be what you would say, oh, it's a creative process and I'm painting a masterpiece, but it is a vehicle for your inner world to intuit and think about it in a creative way to allow you to evolve alongside this paradigm shift in order to create. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. Transitioning to create the new, difficult topic, especially at the moment, uh, but some insightful stuff in there and some great questions asked uh, by participants, which we're not able to show for confidentiality and GDPR reasons, but lots of interesting insights into accepting the reality of our situation and transitioning our skill sets, both psychologically and practically, in order to be in a good place to prepare for and to create the new way we will work and live our lives. So really good content, really good participation. And we would love to have you join live on our next session, which will be coming in a few weeks time. And we will we'll post a recording here, but seeing you live would be fantastic. So take care, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon.